As workplaces become increasingly diverse, it's inevitable that some organizations will have to deal with competing human rights issues. Sherry Robertson, a senior policy analyst with the Ontario Human Rights Commission, says it's important for employers and HR departments to understand how to deal with these situations before they escalate. The Ontario Human Rights Commission has put out a policy on competing human rights which is uh, intended to be a useful tool for employers to help them understand what their obligations are. We've said in that uh, policy that as part of the proactive responsibility of an employer to maintain a discrimination and harassment free workplace that they should also be putting some time and attention into having their own internal competing rights policy so that they are able to educate themselves and their staff about what the process would be if a competing human rights issue emerged. So what might a competing human rights complaint look like? So we've seen um, different types of situations where rights will compete. Um, oftentimes rights within the code will compete. Sometimes even the same right will compete with the, another manifestation of that protection. So. We would uh, see, for example, a situation in which a college professor who uses a guide dog to assist with a visual disability um, is met with complaints from a student who has a severe allergy to dogs and can't attend the lecture provided by the professor because of the, the fact that their eyes will water, their throat will become itchy and scratchy, it's impossible for them to participate in the educational service because of this severe allergy. So that's a case where you see uh, the code protected right of disability conflicting with the code protected right of disability. How would the Ontario Human Rights Commission suggest a situation like this be handled? We would suggest the, uh, the college in that case to sit down with both parties to use our policy and the framework that's in there to go through those steps to decide what the claims are about, to try to educate the parties about not only what their own rights are, but what the rights of the other person are, um, to try to see if the parties can participate in brainstorming a solution that's consistent with legal principles, and to be able to work together to try to come up with um, a solution that helps to respect both sets of rights as much as possible. What does an effective competing human rights policy look like? In the Commission's Policy on Competing Rights, we have an appendix at the back that includes the suggested contents of an internal policy. Employers can take a look at that, include it verbatim if they like, they can tailor it to their own organization, uh, but we've given uh, quite a bit of, of content in that appendix that people can use for their own purposes. What could happen if an organization has no policy? So like any other human rights obligation, if an employer does not um, abide by the responsibilities that are set out in the code, they're vulnerable to having a human rights complaint filed against them. And as we know, um, sometimes the orders made by a tribunal can be very costly, um, not to mention that having a complaint filed, it requires an employer to get involved in the legal process, it takes a lot of time, it's expensive, and it can do damage to the morale of a workplace. 